Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And I am back with a top 10 video. And for this week, we're going to be looking at the top 10 Nintendo Switch games of 2019, or at least the ones that I think are in the top 10 of 2019. If you're interested in what I thought were the top 10 PS4 games of 2019, I'll have a link down in the description, though. 2019, as far as for Nintendo and the Nintendo Switch goes, was actually a very good year for them. Um, there were a lot of games that came out, some surprises like Astro Chain that no one thought came came to games like Witcher 3, Wild Hunt, a game that we thought was impossible, that thought was impossible to come to the Nintendo Switch, actually came to the um, Nintendo Switch. So 2019 definitely saw a lot of games. Some of them turned out to be good and all that, and some of them kind of surprised some people um, in a way. How 2020 will play out for the Switch, um, that remains to be seen, especially with the upcoming PS5 and Xbox um, Series X. So before we get to our top 10, we're going to take a look at the honorable mention. These are games that... <clears throat> Excuse me. These are games that, while they don't make it into the top 10, I do think they are still worth um, your time and, and money and so forth to a certain degree. Uh, we'll start off with the first one, which is Call Juarez uh, Gunslinger. Um, this is one that was released um, in December of December of 2019. This was basically a port of the Call Juarez Gunslinger game that I believe was released on both the Xbox 360 and the PC. Um, and it is, was definitely a fun game indeed. It was basically a a Wild West uh, first person shooter uh, with a really good storyline. You definitely got a little bit of a um, Red Dead Redemption vibe and all that stuff. So it was definitely a fun game even if Red Dead Redemption never comes to the Nintendo Switch. Honestly, I would like if that happens. I would be okay with the first one. Second one, would love to see it happen. I'm not sure if it will happen or not, but who knows. But Call Bar's Gunslinger is definitely one to take a look at. The other one, the next one I do want to point out is Vampire. Vampire. This one is kind of an interesting game as well. It basically is a action RPG set in sort of a Victoria, London. And the gameplay is kind of interesting. You have to sort of basically you know discover why you've been turned into a vampire and so forth while dealing with different kinds of enemies and creatures that haunt um i think like early like 20th century or 19th century or victoria london to be exact i mean the mood and the story to the game is really fun and it really amazes me to see that focus home focus home interactive bought this game over and i definitely would like to see more games from Focus home if that if they ever bring more of their games over to the Nintendo Switch. So, Vamp is definitely one to take a look at. The next one on my list is Ghostbusters: The Video Game Remastered. Though, with while we patiently wait for Ghostbusters Afterlife after we saw the trailer and so so forth, at the time before that trailer was ever revealed, this was probably the closest thing we got to a third Ghostbuster movie and so forth. And while it is kind of a little bit of a misleading to call it a remaster since it's essentially just a port of the 2009 PS3 and 360 version, it is still a blast to play, especially playing as a new recruit and hearing the voices of um, Ernie Hudson, um, Ernie Hudson, um, Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, and the late Harold Ramis in here. Here, rest in peace, um, Egon, and so forth. So it's definitely worth trying out, especially regardless of which version you own. Um, and it's definitely a fun game indeed, though. So Ghostbusters video game, good. It's definitely one worth trying, especially if you're waiting for, you know, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Uh, the next one on my list is ukulele and the impossible layer somewhat sequel to the original ukulele that came out where the original ukulele was more of a sort of like a homage to banjo kazooie ukulele and impossible layer is sort of more like a homage to say the donkey kong country series that the folks at playtonic made up by former members of rare um used to make the game definitely has that sort of it still maintains that Donkey Kong Country vibe to it, though, especially with the music from David Wise. Really, really 
um, good. Gameplay definitely is tough and challenging, especially like games like Donkey Kong Return and Tropical Freeze and New Super Mario Brothers um, U is. So, de and the art style looks great. So, Ukulele and the Impossible Layer definitely goes on to this. The next one, and actually there are two, and they are, are both um, Sword Art Online games, and those are both um, Fatal Bullet and Halo Halo Realization, though. Now, I definitely do enjoy the Sword Art Online series. I've watched um, not all, um, I watched most of them, the Gungab one and the original Sword Art Online. I think there's some more. I have to check those out, though. And I will say for both of these games, to be exact, um, they're both fun, e even though both of them are different. This one plays more closely to the Bandai Namco Tales and to some degree, somewhat like the Xenoblade Chronicles series, where this one feels... It kind of like it kind of plays more closer to to some degree more closer to what like the Borderlands series would be with a little bit of an RPG element though. Um, between both of them, um, both of them are good to be exact. But I have to say, if I had to choose which one I like the most, I would say this one over this one. I think both of them are good, but I still prefer this one mostly because a the story wise. You're not playing as the main character. I mean, everyone doesn't address you as the main character like they do in this one. And this one, and B, I just like the gunplay. I just like the whole, you know, RPG and shooting mechanics to be exact. So, but either way, both Sword Art, Art Line games are still worth picking up. And in case any of you are wondering, these are imported copies of the game as there is no physical version in North America, so I had to import these from Europe, and it worked perfectly fine on my Nintendo Switch. Uh, the next one I do want to talk about is, on the honorable mention, Red Faction um, Remar Gorilla Remars Edition. Um, one of Voltron's, outside of their Saint Row series, one of their other series um, make, makes its way over to the Nintendo Switch. And while it has a little bit more of a serious tone than, say, Saints Row the Third, um, was, I would say, though, the gameplay is still fun. I mean, the destructible environments are nice and so forth. It's, it is still like that fun, you know, guilty pleasure type of a game. And if you enjoyed, um, you know, the Saints Row series, um, it's definitely worth taking a look at. So Red Faction Gorilla is the next one. Uh, the next one on the list is basically Blade 2 The Return of Evil. Now, this one kind of surprised me a little bit. And I have to say, I didn't go in with expectations about this one when it was announced for the Nintendo Switch. But I have to say, I have to give credit to the developers who made this game. That while it is a port of the mobile game, they certainly stuck true to their words as making this a... Not a freemium title, not a pay to win, just a simple, regular title, a straightforward title, and so forth. And honestly, I gotta give them credit with for that. Yes, there are some areas I would have liked to see them, them do, like maybe add a two-player mode, maybe add some levels and not just take the levels from the mobile version and put them into the Switch version. But nevertheless, Blade 2, The Return of Evil, I did think was a... Fun, excuse me, a fun game to play on the Nintendo Switch. The next one on the list is Saints Row the Third, the full package. Now, um, when the game originally launched, though, apparently they delayed an update for the game, and that kind of hurt the kind of hurt it in general, though. That made the game almost virtually unplayable. So when the update finally came out, it did fix some of the problems and certainly made the game more enjoyable than it was. Unfortunately, I kind of felt like the damage may have already been done to some degree. But nevertheless, out of all the Saints Row games that I played, 3 and 4, and even um, Agents of Mayhem, which I would love to see that come to the Nintendo Switch, Saints Row the Third I, is, in my opinion, the best one in the series. I just love the whole over the top, breaking the fourth, fourth wall gameplay that Saints Row is known for. And the fact that it includes all the DLCs and everything like that is an additional bonus though. Um, if you could get over the fact of the, the whole issue they had when the game launched and now the, with the updates now available though, Saints Row the Third is definitely worth picking up, especially as we wait for Saints Row 4 re-elected coming to the um, Nintendo Switch. 
the next one do you want to talk about that unfortunately i couldn't find the box art so i i unfortunately don't have it with me right now is final fantasy 12 the zodiac age out of all the final fantasy games out there that i have tried and played i would say there are only two <coughs> excuse me there are only two that i could think of that stuck out the most the first one is Final Fantasy X with its traditional gameplay but with some interesting mechanics such as being able to switch out certain heroes during combat that can be very useful in battle. And of course Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age. To me, um, the combat does have a little bit of a learning curve but once you understand it you'll be able to execute what you need to execute in there. Plus the art style and the story in the game is really good. I get that sort of, I get a little bit of a Star Wars vibe out of that game. So it's definitely, um, in my view, one of my favorite Final Fantasy games out there. So it's definitely worth getting for the Nintendo Switch, or if you have a PS4, get it for PS4 or Xbox One or PC for that matter. The next one I do want to say, next one I do want to talk about is Dragon Dogma Dark Arisian. Um... Now, I've heard a little bit about this game, but I never played it when it was originally came to the PS3 or when they did a re Dark Risen for the PS4. So when I heard that they were bringing this over to the Nintendo Switch, I decided to take a look at it and give it a go. And I could see why this game has so has gained a following, though. Dragon Dogma Dark Risen is, sort is a very fun game. It sort of takes... It's sort of, in my view, Capcom's approach to sort of like what the Elder Scrolls Skyrim was to Bethesda in a way. Only I feel like the visuals for that game look better than what Skyrim does and all that stuff. And the whole idea with the prawn system is nice. Your aid and the folks that can help you out and so on. So it's just a fun and enjoyable game. I do hope we do get a sequel at some point, so down the road. But in either case... Dragon Dogma Dark Arisian is a fun and enjoyable game, not to mention. With this one, you're getting all your DLCs and so forth. <clears throat> the next one I do want to talk about are two others as well. And those are both Darksiders um, Warmaster Edition and Darksiders um, Definitive Edition. Now, I apologize I couldn't get uh, the, the Definitive Edition review out there. Unfortunately, I didn't have time, so I apologize for that. But... Both of these two are definitely uh, fun games. I mean, yes, you could argue in a way that both Darksiders and Darksiders 2, I mean, some you could easily say like, okay, that's parts like Zelda, that's parts like Diablo, that parts like God of War, that's parts like Devil May Cry. But while it does borrow elements from certain games, it still makes, it still feels like it's its own game indeed. The art style looks great, the visuals um, look good, the voice acting and the combat is still enjoyable nevertheless. So both of these are still good games. I still view um, Darksiders 2 as my favorite entry because I like the whole, it still gets that like Legend of Zelda and sort of like that Diablo vibe to it. So that certainly isn't a bad thing. So if you get a chance, um, get these though um we also know that dark side of genesis is out so that's worth i'm um, taking a look at i'm hoping at some i'm hoping one day that thq nordic will bring over um dark siders 3 if it's possible i would like to see that come over to the nintendo switch the next one i want to talk about is travis strikes again no more heroes for the nintendo switch i also believe it i believe it's also coming to the ps4 as well um, this was an interesting title when it was originally announced for the Nintendo Switch back in 2017. That Suda51 wanted to do something a little bit different with the No More Hero brand and sort of create sort of like an indie game with it. So it was kind of interesting to go in that direction, not to mention it was developed by a small studio and all. And I have to say, while it isn't 100% perfect, and it may not be the No More Hero games that some of us were waiting for it until E3 when we learned that No More Heroes 3 is going to happen though. It was still, it still maintained that kind of charm that Suda51 is known for. And it's still an enjoyable game. At least for me it is. Especially when you play as either, um, Bat, I think it was Batman and Travis Touchdown in a way. So, and it's something to keep you occupied until, um, no More Heroes 3 comes out, although I would love to see a port of No More Heroes 1 and 2 come to the um, Nintendo Switch. 
The next one I talk about is um, New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. Um, now this is basically a port of the launch title for the Wii U back, I believe, in 2012. And while it doesn't have the same kind of visuals in a way that Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze or say Rayman Legends or like Ukulele and Impossible Layer does, the game still holds up well. It follows, it does follow the tired true formula that um, the Mario Brothers series, or at least the 2D ones, are known for. And the gameplay is still spot on, even though I still, even though it's not as good as say like the old 2D Mario games like Super Mario World or Super Mario Brothers 3. Plus, you're getting both New Super Mario Bros. U and Super Luigi U's in here. And you also have the Super Crown, which basically is used for Totally or Totalette or one of the Toads. I'm not 100% sure. Which also gave birth to the whole Bow Bowserette meme and all that stuff back then. But in either case, though, um, New Super Mario Bros. Deluxe is still a fun um, 2D Mario game, even if I don't see it as the best 2D Mario game. Um, out there and last but not least in the honorable mention I do want to talk about is um, Super Mario Maker uh, 2 apologize if I didn't get a review on that one this was an interesting title when the first one came out for the Wii U and it was one of the first one of the titles that really utilized the Wii U gamepad as it basically made you allow you to create your own like Mario level whether it's and the art style of the original Mario Brothers, Mario Brothers 3, Mario World, or even the new Super Mario Brothers U though. Sadly, it came out at a time when the Wii U was on its way out. And the sequel, um, it does make some improvement. It adds some new features in terms of how to change some of the courses and all that stuff to a story mode in the game, which is basically levels designed by some of the folks who worked at Nintendo. And the But the whole selling point is that you design your level and then put it out there on the internet for other people to try out. Some of the levels, I will say, are actually kind of very creative and I have to give credit to some of them. And some of them do provide a very um, interesting challenge um, indeed. Plus the fact that they added a new um, art style, the Super Mario 3D World as well. So that's sort of interesting. So in either case, it is it is a fun game. I mean, it feels like a spiritual successor to say, like, you definitely get a little bit or a little bit of that Mario Paint vibe out of it. So, Super Mario Maker 2 makes it on my list of honorable mention. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, we'll get to uh, part two, which will be the top ten video... Top ten... Nintendo, or at least my top 10 Nintendo Switch games of 2019. It will go through 10 through 6. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part 2 of our, of my, or should I say my top 10 videos of, uh, excuse me, top 10 um, Nintendo Switch games of 2019. Just had a brain fart at the, that moment. So now that we got the honorable mentions out of the way, which mm, there were a lot, so we'll get started with our top 10. This is through 10 through 6. And these are the games that I certainly definitely deserve to be on my list of best Nintendo Switch games of 2019. We'll start off with the first one at number 10. And that will be, um, if I'm saying the name correctly, Tales of Vert's Besta, if I apologize I'm not saying it correctly, um, Definitive Edition for the Nintendo Switch. This version is also available on PC, PS4, and Xbox One though. Um, the Tales series is kind of a series that I sort of started to get into more and more. Some of it may be that the game definitely, the combat and all that stuff has, kind of feels kind of similar to say what the Xenoblade Chronicles series has been on, on the Nintendo systems before. And the fact that this is a game that was originally released, I believe, as an exclusive on the Xbox 360, finally making its way to other systems, is definitely a nice addition. And it is definitely a fun game if you enjoyed the Tale series indeed. Now, if only Bandai Namco can bring um, the other Tale series over to Nintendo Switch, um, that would certainly um, be great. The next one on this list, and some may or may not agree with me on that one, is... 
Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, um, this is at number 9, The Black Order. Now, it was kind of interesting to hear that Nintendo was funding this game back in, <coughs> excuse me, back in 2017 when they showed the official trailer for the game at the Video Game Awards. And it was also interesting to hear that Koei Techno and Team Ninja were the ones um, developing the game. And the end result is actually a fun um, action RPG, even though it has no ties to Marvel Ultimate Alliance 1 and 2. And even though it feels like it, you definitely get more of a MCU, which is a Marvel Cinematic Universe vibe, um, out of the game indeed. It may not live up to like what the first and second one were, though, but it definitely it was is definitely a fun game. It's basically you can play both online or offline and see some of the cast of characters in here, including different um, the spider man such as, you know, like I like Spider Gwen, the original Spider Man Venom, to you know the X Men in in here as well, which kind of is sort of people made a reference to how Capcom didn't put X Men in Marvel Ultimate Lines Infinite or anything like that, but it is definitely is an enjoyable um, action RPG, even though it may not be on the same level as say like what an action RPG like Diablo was in any way. So. Marvel Ultimate Lines 3, The Black Order, it comes in at number 9. It'll be interesting to see if we see something like, I would like to see, like, if they could do, like, a X-Men Legends 3. That would be great if they could do something like that. The next one, number 8 on my list, goes to um, Damien X Machia. Now, I'm sure most of you are aware about some of the controversy Damien X Machia got itself into. We had the situation with, you know, the whole copyright and all the takedowns that Marvelous decided to put out, which I think, in my opinion, kind of hurt the game more than it should have, should have though. But nevertheless, David X Machia was definitely um, a fun game. It was like basically a mech game, kind of similar to how the Armor Core game was. And you definitely got a bit of a Gundam vibe to it in a way. And I actually enjoyed it. I mean, I remember playing the demo, several of the demos when it came out, to playing this on the te and playing this at home and on the go. And it is a fun mech game. It's just a shame it never got the attention it should have gotten. It mostly because of the whole controversy though. Although it is worth pointing out the game is now available on PC so if you missed out on the Switch or you never bother picking up the Switch or if you or you don't even have a Switch you could consider getting it for the PC though. Either way Demi X Machia comes in at number eight. Next one on my list is at number seven um, Sniper Elite 3 um, Ultimate um, Edition. Now I am a fan of the Sniper Elite series, to be exact, though. I've always enjoyed the series a lot. I like the whole kind of setup they have with it as you play as a sniper and you have to find different ways to take out your target or deal with the enemies, whether it's setting up traps or taking them out with your sniper bullet, which hit the right target, hit the right part of the body. You get, and if you turn this feature on, you get the kill camera that shows the x rays and the deaths of those certain so death of the enemy though and while sniper elite 3 isn't like sniper elite 4 in any way which is that one's more of an open world than this one is it still has some open world parts of it such as you know optional objectives and so and so forth but the gameplay is still it's still as enjoyable as it is as always though and the fact that this one you're getting pretty much all the DLCs and all that stuff. I mean, plus you get, you know, HD rumble and motion controls, although I'm sh obviously you could turn those off. But out of all the sniper game leak games on the Nintendo Switch so far, I say the third, or at least the two that are available, Sniper Elite V2 and 3. 3 is my favorite one on the Nintendo Switch. Looking forward to seeing what um, Zombie Army Trilogy is gonna play like when that comes out on the Nintendo Switch, which should be soon. And finally, at number six, though, um, Dragon Quest um, 11S. Now, this game's kind of interesting because this was announced at the time when the Nintendo Switch was referred to as the NX. And many kind of felt like Square Enix may have kind of um, jumped the gum just maybe a little bit when they announced the game, though, since no one knew what the Nintendo, what NX was, until, you know, eventually Nintendo revealed what it is, which is the Switch and so forth. And I can see why many view this as the definitive edition. While 
The visuals may not be up on the same level as say the PS4, Xbox One, or the PC version. The game basically is like as enjoyable as it is. Visually, the, cart the art style looks nice. I mean, it's barely as noticeable as say like Witcher 3 Wild Hunt would be though. And the combat um, is still as enjoyable. It's a classic turn-based um, RPG, all that stuff. And you also get basically the orchestra music. And the also the fun part is that you could play this game entirely in 2D mode. Like how it would be in the old school Dragon Quest games back in the day. So it's definitely a fun game indeed. It's worth getting um, as far as which version to pick up. Depending on what your main system choice is. The Switch is my main system choice. But definitely a fun especially if you like traditional RPG. So Dragon Quest XI at number 6. <clears throat> okay uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back we're going to get to part 3. And this will be 5 to, our num five to 1. To the number 1 or is what I view as the number 1 best Nintendo Switch game of 2019. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with our third and final part of my, what I view the top 10 Nintendo Switch games of 2019. So we're down to the Final five right here, and we'll start off with number five, and that is The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Complete Edition. I never thought I would ever see the day that a game like this would make its way over to the um, Nintendo Switch. When I heard rumors about it back in December 2018 that there were word about Witcher 3 coming to the Nintendo Switch, I took as kind of a wait and see approach. Because on one hand, I couldn't possibly imagine a graphically demanding game like that making its way over to the Nintendo Switch. However, when this was before, this was, I would have, this was before I saw Doom and Wolfenstein 2 come to the Nintendo Switch. And when, and when those games finally came over, to me I was like thinking, well, maybe it may not be able to make its way over. But there's always the possibility, considering the fact that um, the fact that it, we got graph a graphically demanding game could make its way over to Nintendo Switch. Then we started seeing retailers start leaking out information about Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Then the voice actor of Gerald came out of his way, went out of his way to basically tweet about it, which then became gave the impression of where there's smoke and when there's fire. And so when E3 2020 E3 20, 2019 came around and Nintendo had their E3 digital presentation. My mouth dropped when I saw Witcher 3 on the Nintendo Switch. A graphically demanding game, a game that no one ever thought came to the Nintendo Switch, made its way over to the Nintendo Switch. And it, uh, I just still blows my mind how Saber Interactive and CD Projekt Red were able to pull it off. The fact that these guys put all the 16 DLCs, both the expansion packs, and when, I, and not to mention the recent update that they put in, which now you could transfer your save game to your Steam version or GOG version, and I think vice versa, makes this like the definitive version. The fact that CD Projekt Red and Saber Interactive were willing to go above and beyond, put everything into one game cartridge, and do and make this version just hold out very well. It it still blows my mind to this day that a game like this can make its way over to the Nintendo Switch. And it does give some hope, not nothing official, but some hope that perhaps maybe Cyberpunk 2077 could maybe make its way over to the Nintendo Switch. Again, no guarantee that it's gonna happen or anything like that, but it does open the door to that um possibility though. So Witcher 3, in my opinion, is a must-own regardless of what system you own, own. But on the Nintendo Switch, I make it the um, number fit, my fifth best game of 2019. The next one, um, and I unfortunately did not get a review on this one, so I apologize for that, is 
Fire Emblem um, Three Houses, though. Um, Fire Emblem has been seeing lately a resurgent, though. This started with Fire Emblem Awakening, and then it continued with Fire Emblem Fate, Fire Emblem Echoes, and when we have Fire Emblem Warriors, which is, to me, the second best warrior game out there, with Hyrule, which, although I do feel this one, Fire Emblem Warrior, edges out Hyrule Warriors by just a teeny bit, though. The Fire Emblem Three Houses continues that tradition of the classic Fire Emblem games, with some noticeable difference, though. Instead, this time is you take a tr that you are a teacher at the school and you pick which of the three houses you want to, <coughs> excuse me, um, teach and so forth. And the gameplay follows the same kind, somewhat of the same kind of approach that classic other past Fire Emblem games. At, that you know and love, although they've, I do feel that they have done away, I believe they did away with the famous weapon wheel, which is, I believe it's sword beats axe, axe beats spear, spear beats sword, um, and the visual of the game and the art style definitely looks nice, I believe it's, I think it might have been the same artist who did art styles for games like Persona or the Trauma series and so forth. And it is kind of impressive how Koei Techno actually helped out in this game. Uh, the only downside I have is that the visuals are kind of eh, a hit and miss. It's not terrible or anything like that. But when compared to, say, like Luigi's Mansion 3 or Mario Odyssey or Breath of the Wild, I have to say those kind of look better than Fire Emblem Three Houses. But then again, the Fire Emblem series is not really well known for its visuals or anything like that. But either way, strategy fans or Fire Emblem fans should definitely give this one a go. It's amazing the series has definitely was once on death's door, has now become a staple for Nintendo and all that stuff. And here's to hoping we see more Fire Emblem down the road and maybe Nintendo could dig in and bring in some other games like I would love to see the Advanced War series make a comeback. If Fire Emblem can make a comeback, I'm sure that series can make a comeback indeed. The next one on my list at number three is, no pun intended, <coughs> excuse me, Luigi's Mansion 3, though. Um, Luigi's Mansion has, the Luigi's Mansion series has always been kind of a niche series in a way. It first launched originally back on the Nintendo GameCube, and it was basically kind of like, um, a tech demo to some degree of what the capability of the, um, Nintendo GameCube can do. And to some degree, it kind of felt like Nintendo's own take on the classic, um, Resident Evil game, though. And while the game didn't exactly i think it did not sell as well as it should have been it gained the following over the years so it was kind of interesting when they also did the sequel dark moon and brought that over to the 3ds which did very well and then they decided then, then there were rumors about this coming to the switch and then when they finally revealed it though the game actually blew up and did much better than a lot of people expected i mean it still follows the tire and true formula that the Luigi Mansion series is known for, but it also introduces some new mechanics, ranging from Goo Luigi, which can act as sort of, can go into certain areas that regular Luigi couldn't go through, it's adding a bit of a puzzle element to it though. Um, the multiplayer mode, it's, it's kind of fun though. I mean, some modes only work best when you're every, everybody's working together, which henceforth the whole Switch Online app, which, or you know, you know, you know, voice chat through your phone, which I think is a stupid thing in, in the first place. But the multiplayer is fun, and the, and of course, the gameplay itself is still fun indeed. Especially seeing these expression on Luigi's face, where he gets spooked out when he sees something like creepy, whether it's like opening the door and then something's creeping him out, just seeing him stand still. So, Luigi's Mansion Three is number three on my list. The next one on my list, number two, is the Switch version of The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, a remake of the original 1993 Game Boy Classic, which was also um, ported over in 1998 to the Game Boy Color to take advantage of the Game Boy Color, though. So while we patiently wait for basically the sequel to Breath of the Wild 2, whether it's called Breath of the Wild 2 or not, 
um, we basically have The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. And the game follows the approach, follows more of a traditional Zelda approach than what Breath of the Wild does, though. But it also makes some improvement in some area. Some of the mechanics and gameplay have received an update rather than, you know, in the old game where you rely on the assigning things to A and B, you now can assign things to A, B, I think X and Y as well. <clears throat> and some items like say the rock feather are automatically, you automatically don't have to attach it to it, any of the buttons. So they improve some quality of life stuff, but the visuals actually um are really nice. I like the art style that they did with the Link's Awakening for the Nintendo Switch. <clears throat> My only downside was when going to one area to another, I noticed the frame rate kind of dips a little bit, but not too long. But for the most part, the game looks like it holds very well at 60 frames per second. But even though it's not a sequel to Breath of the Wild as we wait for that though, Link's Awakening is nevertheless a fun game and would be open to seeing maybe a remake of other Zelda games, maybe like Minishing Cap or Oracle Season or Oracle Age. That would be nice if they do that. Second, <clears throat> all right, and now we get to we finally conclude with the number one Nintendo Switch game of 2019, or at least the one I think is number one in 2019. And some may or may not agree with me on this, but I stand behind this decision. And my number one Nintendo Switch game of 2019 is Astro Chain from. Platinum and Nintendo. This was kind of a bit of a surprise when shown at one of the directs that that Platinum and Nintendo were working on an, a title exclusively for the um, Nintendo Switch. And boy, did this was it well worth it though. It maintains that st Platinum charm and all that stuff, even though the game runs at 30 frames, not 60 frames per second. But a lot makes up for it from the uh, great anime art style to the storyline, which you get a bit of a sort of a Pacific Rim slash Akira slash Blade Runner vibe to it. And the whole detective and combat is just, is also enjoyable. It is very fun and enjoyable, especially with the Legions, which you kind of get a little bit of a wonderful 101 <clears throat> and Chaos Legion vibe to it though. And you use your Legions for many things, ranging from doing certain puzzles to fighting other, um, other enemies out there and so forth. And it's just an enjoyable um, experience and so forth. And it's I, it's really nice to see what Platinum and what Nintendo did. I mean, I understand um, Platinum wants to do their own thing and we've seen recently they're doing their own stuff and all, but I do hope to see Nintendo and Platinum work together to do stuff like um, Astro Chain. And given how well that game does, I would love, I would absolutely love to see a sequel to this this is definitely definitely it should be on any this should definitely is a must own for your nintendo switch so to me my number one nintendo switch game 2019 it goes to astro chain <clears throat> okay um this concludes my top 10 nintendo switch games of 2019 and again these are my opinion. What are yours? What are your thoughts of, of my top 10 Nintendo Switch games of 2019? Do you agree with my top 10 list? Um, do you disagree? Are there certain games that you would place on this list from either through the 10 through 6, 5 to 1, or in the honorable mention? Are there games you think I should have put on this list? Or you think there are games I should have that should not have been on this list or anything like that? As always, sound off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And if you like this video, I hope you hit the like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you do, make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any new videos I put up. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to. And feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You can do it through PayPal me or Patreon. Links will be in the description of this video. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, wish you all a good day then. Bye!